Have you noticed that the sizes of processed food items and other products at the supermarket have been growing smaller and smaller while their prices stay the same? That's because of a disturbing economic trend called shrinkflation. Shrinkflation occurs when manufacturers reduce a product in size instead of increasing its price. It's a trick that companies use to fool people into thinking they are paying for the same exact items on their shopping list that they usually pick up at the market. Shoppers find it challenging to buy within their budget when companies pull the rug out from under them with sneaky tactics like shrinkflation. Manufacturers assert that they must either raise prices or reduce the sizes of products because their costs of raw materials have grown due to inflation. And because cash-strapped consumers are so price-sensitive, the companies have decided it's best to charge shoppers the same price and just give them smaller-sized products. To make matters worse, it appears that Mother Nature herself has been shortchanging humanity with ever smaller animals, vegetables, and fruits. For example, Holstein cows that used to weigh about 1,500 pounds in the past now routinely tip the scales at a mere 900 to 1,200 pounds. Our grandparents used to enjoy large carrots that were delicious and nutritious right out of the ground. But today's skimpy carrots are much smaller and less enjoyable. It even seems they might have fewer nutrients. Pumpkins used to grow so large that an entire neighborhood could share one of them for a community jack-o'-lantern. Nowadays, due to Mother Nature's apparent new stinginess, pumpkins are so small they are only suitable for decorating a single porch for one home instead of being able to light up every front door in the neighborhood for trick-or-treaters. It seems that Mother Nature is reacting to cruel market forces, the same way that food manufacturers are responding. Scientists are discovering data that indicates the animal kingdom and plant kingdom are starting to shrink ever so slightly right before our very eyes. Of course, America has been through this kind of food crisis before. In the 1950s, our farmers' tree limbs groaned heavy with fruit, as loudly as a treasure-crammed pirate ship fleeing a dangerous, unexpected squall. But in the middle of the 20th century, some scientists anticipated that Mother Nature would soon start shortchanging us. They created a consortium of government, academia, and advertisers to promote cigarette smoking to the nation's youth to help stunt their growth. Smaller people wouldn't need to eat as much food to survive, the reasoning went. Fortunately, food production soon ramped up again, and scientists started to discourage people of all ages from smoking. In this consumer-focused era, when might things get back to normal at the supermarkets so people can start to pay a fair price for the product sizes they want to buy? International macroeconomics experts have been predicting that when manufacturing and supply chain issues get sorted out by America's captains of industry, we should anticipate an improvement in the financial sector. That's good for everyone's budget, from paupers to kings. 
In line with what the financial prognosticators are thinking, it's possible that when the economy starts to pick up again, Mother Nature will resume producing animals, fruits, and vegetables in the familiar sizes, weights, and amounts that humans have become accustomed to over the many millennia we have been stewards of this planet. In the meantime, shrinkflation is something we will all just have to contend with.